Hey, welcome to Classic Performance, and boy, have we got a great one for you today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a 100% frame off restored, judged first place winning 1941 Cadillac 60 Special with coachwork by Fleetwood. We're going to do a little walk around of this car, give you all the details about it, take a look under the hood, show you how everything works on the car, and just a full overview of this absolutely stunning 1941 Cadillac 60 Series Special with coachwork by Fleetwood. So as we look around, the color on this car might look like it's black to you, but it's actually Antoinette blue. Absolutely stunning Antoinette blue. This car weighs 4,235 pounds, is powered by a 356 cubic inch 16 valve flathead V8 with 150 horsepower at 3,400 RPM and uh, 283 foot-pounds of torque at about 1,700 RPM. So a nice torquey motor. Uh, the car runs very nicely. This has a three-speed on the tree, but these also could be had. This is the first year for the uh, turbo hydromatic transmission. A uh, couple other things to note while we're here, and we'll look under the hood. It's a Stromberg two-barrel uh, downdraft carburetor and the length of this car from end to end sits on a 126 inch wheelbase so we'll just take a take a quick look around and uh, show you a couple things that are that are really unique to this car it's fitted with the optional um fog lights right here you would have had a metal cover and a medallion just kind of plugged this hole if you did not have the fog light option and we'll show you the how they operate on the inside. It's got a really nice switch uh, that actually lights up when you turn it. it, has an F or fog on it, so it does have the, the fog light option. Uh, you also might have noticed it does have the, the wheel skirt options in the back. We'll take a look at that in a little bit later. And you just look at the chrome on this car and everything is just so elaborate and so perfect. Uh, what I don't know is uh, this bar right here, if that was, was kind of an optional thing where every uh, Cadillac in 1941 had that. Uh, for something that, that I'm incorrect about, I'm not an expert on Cadillacs, though I do love them, uh, please leave it in the comments. And if you like the content, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because we're going to be doing more of this car. Not only are we going to do a walk around today, but next week we're going to take it on a, on a driving video, take it out on the road and show you that too. Uh, it'll take two hands for me to open the hood, but uh, you just pull the ornament right here and you pull the hood forward and it opens. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, one of the things too, is this is a one piece hood. Some of these went from side to side, but this one does open up all the way. But you just look at the, the length of these fenders and they call these pontoon fenders and you can kind of see why. It's like a, it's like a big pontoon. Uh, one of the nice things is, is you don't have hood all the way up here. Very easy to see out of because you've got this narrowed uh, front section here and it's easy to see around unlike some of the other cars we feature like the 48 Packard that has a much wider hood much more to look over uh, so this car is very very uh, uh, visibly safe in terms of of, of, um, of, of how it's designed and how you can see out of it you look down here to some of these details just these little ribs right here that are painted a uh, very nice detail here you got our spats uh, this car does have the uh, uh, the full the full fender skirts and you know obviously this car is not going to be terribly fuel efficient as you might imagine uh, weighing at 4232 pounds uh, with a flathead v8 and where you put all that fuel well, you put it right in the gas tank and right here is where you put the fuel in and here's your gas cap so that's where the fuel goes in. Um, many cars, even uh, into the 50s, still used a tail light for uh, accessing the fuel. And again, you look at the rear bumper, uh, it does resemble the front and all the detail and the different levels of, of this stamping right here. The chrome is beautiful. And here's your ribs right here. This rib thing from the rockers back to the bumpers and all. Um, you know continues You've got your light here for the license plate and this is glass uh, these are glass uh, glass lenses on here too you know this is before uh, they went to plastic so everything on here is glass and of course the other side's exactly the same so let's take a look let's take a look under the hood at the uh, 350 cubic inch 5.7 liter flathead VA once you release this hood you just pull it straight up 
Uh, this hood is so large and it's so heavy. It actually has four springs, two on either side right here uh, to help you lift the hood. But as you can see, everything under here is just impeccable. As I mentioned before, 356 cubic inches. It does have 16 valves and 150 horsepower at 3,400 RPM, 283 foot-pounds of torque on the Stromberg uh, uh, two-barrel downdraft carburetor. Here's your alternator right here, and of course your air bath breather. And one of the interesting things uh, that you might not notice till I point it out, and I'll get maybe on the other side, where we uh, are out of the sun and have a little more even light but the the thing on these Cadillac V8s to note is the exhaust you would think the exhaust would come down here like a traditional V8 off the bottom of each head but the exhaust actually is right here uh, this is the exhaust this is the exhaust crossover from the other uh, manifold it comes off the top of the head so each exhaust is on the top of the motor it comes down right here and this is a very nice Celia uh, asbestos coated uh, downpipe. The downpipe comes here and then back out uh, to the exhaust and the muffler. So, so this is the exhaust on the top of the motor. Of course your uh, uh, radiator hoses and um, and that's about it. You know just a very basic uh, and very large. You can look at my hand and look at the size, the width of the valve, uh, the head actually not the valve cover. This is actually the head because the valves are in the block but this is very wide. That valve cover on this, you know, is probably as wide as a, uh, uh, a 426 Hemi or something like that. Incredibly wide valve uh, and head design. And then, of course, on the other side here, we've got our fuel pump. And then you can see here again is the exhaust. This is the exhaust right here. And this exhaust is, um, is a ceramic or some kind of, uh, you know, baked, you know, enameled porcelain finish. Incredibly beautiful. So the underneath of this, the under hood of this car uh, is absolutely spectacular. And you can see the quality uh, of just how these cars were produced and the finishes they, that they used back then. There were no bean counters. Nobody was concerned about the cost of the automobile. It just had to be right. And the quality and the finishes on this thing are amazing. Another unique thing I want to show you is I don't know that this car has uh, a traditional coolant thermostat. So up front, and I don't know if you can see it, but up front here in the radiator, you have grill shutters. And these, we've, we've run the car so these grill shutters are open, facing perfectly straight. They're thermostatically controlled grill shutters, and they will close uh, when the car is cool. So one of the things that I check when we drive this car occasionally is we'll start it, we'll make sure the grill shutters open up. When these grill shutters are closed, the whole front of the radiator is completely shut off, so there's no air getting in there. If these grill shutters don't open, the car will very quickly overheat. So you've got two access holes right here, and you can look down in here, and we'll see if we can see it again, but you can see the grill, the grill shutters. I can't, I can't move them um, because they are thermostatically controlled and opened. There we go, I can move them a little bit. You can see the shutters close, open, close, open. And where I'm moving them is right here on the radiator. This is the thermostatic control that goes down uh, to operate those grill shutters. So anyway, if you're not a, if you're not completely into the mechanics and you're not a, a motorhead and gearhead like myself, uh, we're gonna end this part of the tour and we're gonna take a look at the luxurious interior of this Fleetwood. We'll just take a very quick look here at the passenger side and you can see the, uh, the emblem right here for the uh, 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 Classic Car Club of America. Uh, and this is, a, this is a first place uh, senior class award winner with a judge score of 98.5 points. So it's almost perfect. As we take a look at the inside here, uh, finished in just a stunning blue fabric, uh, right down to perfection. And of course, we talked about this uh, coachwork by Fleetwood. And right here is where you see the Fleetwood emblem on the threshold of, you know, a very similar threshold emblem like you would have with a body by Fisher. Uh, but these were Fleetwood bodied cars, Fleetwood coachwork. So we take a look at the inside here and a beautiful steering wheel. We'll talk about that more when we're, when we're driving the car, but just a beautiful ivory, a nice casting on this. Uh, and, the, and of course the door panels this is for your, your wind wings your uh, main uh, uh, entry in and out this is your lock and then this is your 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 main or big window 
Um, one of the things I'm curious about, if you know what kind of what kind of wood this is, this is real wood. This isn't faux painted. If you know, if you're a woodworker and you can see this grain, I would be very interested to know uh, in the comments what kind of wood this is on the door. And even in the back here, we've got the same wood. I'll get it here in the light. You know, I'm not a woodworker, but this might be uh, some kind of a burl wood, and I don't know what the top is. But if you look at that grain, and, and, and you know what that is, leave it in the comments. So we're here in the interior, of course. I'm going to push my clutch in. This is our gear shift right here. We'll put it, we'll put it neutral. I'm going to go ahead and press the, press the start, turn the key on right down here. You press and put the clutch in, press the start button. And she comes right to life. We'll let it uh, warm up a little bit here so our gauges will come up and you can see those. But of course our speedometer, our trip meter, and down at the bottom down here, uh, you've got a, a reset for the trip meter. Of course, I mentioned this is our this is our starter. Over here, we've got our uh, our vent. So when I put that vent up, that opens our our cowl vent. And uh, even on a day like today, where it's it's cool out but it's sunny, the cabin interior can get a little warm. Uh, you just open that that cowl vent a little bit, you get nice ventilation through here. Uh, this would be where our radio would be. This is a this is really a radio delete car, so I had this, this plate in here, but this is where your radio push buttons would be, and the speaker would be right here. Of course, you got your clock, your cigarette lighter, and over here, and of course the horn, and I'll, has a very nice sound to it. We'll take a look at our gauges. Now, we're still kind of cold on the temperature, and you just look at that beautiful script right there, uh, and here's our battery, and I'll give it a little fuel, a little gas. You can see it's charging. This is our gasoline gauge. Uh, we're just about full. We filled it up the other day. And oil pressure at idle uh, is right about 30 pounds. Uh, and then down here is for your uh, your climate control. So you got a switch right here. It's a two-step, one, two. It's actually a three-step, two or three. But I can hear the fan running. So this is your blower right here, medium and off. And then this is fresh air, or it goes to defrost. And then here's our temperature right here, uh, cold, and then over to hot. Uh, so that's some of the, the accent pieces too. I don't know how well you can see this. Here is our turn signal lever, but it's nice. It's a flat blade in, in beautiful chrome. And, our fog, and this is our brake release right here. And then our fog light switch, it's, whoops, I just hit the horn. Our fog light switch here, you turn the fog light on and you can see how that glows. And that glow right there lets you know that the fog lights are on. So it's glowing, I turn it, it stops glowing. So those are those are our fog lights. One other thing I want to point out too, you know, Cadillac was so proud of the V8 engine. Uh, each pedal here says Cadillac Motors on it with the V8 symbol on the bottom of it. So very proud of the V8 Cadillac was. That's about the, uh, the the overview of the, the interior and in the driver's compartment. Let's take a look at the back seat. There's some things back there that will surprise you. So we take a look at the back seats laid out very much just like the front door. This is our kind of our wind wing here. And your lock is just this little pin. You pull the pin back, you pull this out, pull it back, and it's got a pin that locks it right here. Uh, and this is our handle, our entry and exit, our exit handle window crank and of course our lock. Um, this too is, uh, as you can see, has the Fleetwood threshold on it. We've got a courtesy light right here and this ashtray and cigarette lighter, there's one on the other side that's exactly the same, ashtray and cigarette lighter uh, has a roll top on it. It's very fragile so I'm not going to move it but you pull it back it's got an ashtray and a lighter so every every you know place in the back has a lighter for back in the day when people smoked a lot. Uh, and then one of the things that's uh, a sure sign of luxury back here. One of the one of the many things you've got your you've got your robe holder right here. So on those cold days, you can hang your robe over here. Uh, you've got a footrest. This bar right here is a footrest, and of course your floor mats and your seat. Um, what really spells luxury in these cars, and understanding how they might have been used in 1941, from the front seat to the dash. Uh, has about 11 to 12 inches of kind of leg room or knee room. 
in the back back here from the back of the seat to the front back here this is 16 inches so you actually have a much more comfortable and much more spacious spacious rear seat in the back of this Cadillac and one of the reasons for that might be is that if you had the means to buy uh, a, a 60 special with the Fleetwood coachwork uh, and the big V8 like this you might have had yourself a driver and you did ride in the front uh, you rode in the back if you own this car so this is really set up uh, more so for an owner and for traveling back here as a passenger beautiful headline up here uh, with the side to side ribbing and the triple rear window and these doors close like a bank vault every door in this closes like a bank vault you can hear the VA running up front. We'll go to the back and take a look at the, uh, and just take a listen to the exhaust. You can hear that little bit of V8 rumble from the flathead. And, uh, idling perfectly, idles right about, uh, 800 RPM. Take a look in the trunk back here. All right, so I had to get the keys out of the ignition. You have to unlock this trunk to turn the handle and when you take the key out of this trunk, um, it automatically locks. So you unlock it, and when you take the key back out, it automatically locks it so it cannot stay unlocked. Uh, here's our spare tire, nice bias ply tire with beautiful body padding to match, uh, and, a, and a fairly good sized trunk. You know, it's not as big as the cars from the 50s, uh, and it does have a light up here. It has sound deadening insulation, interestingly enough. And, you know, you don't see that in many old cars, the attention to sound uh, deadening in the panels, but it has it up here in the trunk and a lot of other areas of the car making it incredibly quiet uh, when you go down on the road. Turn the key, take it out, she's locked. Over here in the passenger side, uh, I've got something really nice to show you in the, in the glove box. Uh, right here we've got our uh, Cadillac hints for the 1941 Cadillac so just kind of operational uh, hints of how to drive and how to drive this particular Cadillac uh, so we've got that and then we've got the, uh, the automobile user's guide with wartime suggestions and those wartime suggestions are on how to save fuel and uh, you know do things to be more efficient uh, to do your part in helping out with the war and before we come to an end here I'll show you our our fog lights uh, burning, can't see it very well in the, in the daylight. And of course there's our parking lights and our headlights are off. And when you turn on the headlights, the parking lights do go off. So they do not work simultaneously like a, like a new car would. So that's gonna, that's gonna kind of do it for our quick walk around of the 1941 Cadillac Fleetwood. As I mentioned, we'll come back. We'll be taking this car for a nice drive and we'll give you the driving experience uh, here in the Cadillac. So, Thanks for your time. Thanks for viewing the channel. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and hope you have a great day.